Give your street kings. Every indiscretion of love will take care of your family. I can bear witness, and so can my family, that I sacrificed my life and my family for the cause that Elijah Muhammad put in front of me. Six
sent a message to me in 1982 through a sister from Phoenix, Africa. And Brother Jabril brought her to me in 1982 to give me the message that she had received. I was trying to raise seventy-five thousand dollars for the years who were coming up, and uh, the Savior spoke to me during the day. Yeah, seventy-five thousand dollars. Millions to raise up.
Bisognete Gabi Nuovo Lombardo Let me go! 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 gonna do because he sanctioned it. I want you to pay me good attention. And they were proposing a toast to the Jews who lived outside of the walls of Gaza that separated Gaza. Concerned about 
the Middle East. You're concerned about the refugees that are coming into the major cities. And you feel they take your place. But to charge Israel with genocide and have the proof of their charge, South Africa stood up and took Israel to the International Court of Justice at the Hague. And it's been a meeting in the
They tried to give you drugs because you love drugs, but you're not wise to comfort yourself and family and care for your lives from But I was on the wall. Yeah. 
why don't we have the NAACP gather all black groups and black leaders together under their banner? I'd like to be a part of it. They had the meeting. The black leaders showed up. But outside the door, the Jewish leaders were there. And they watched those that they paid for come in. Only one they were worried about was Farrakhan is in there. Uh, it lasted for about three meetings, and then we fell apart because the members of the Jewish community threatened black members that they would withdraw their money. So you become a little whore. I'm sorry. I don't want to make the subject or the dinner that I've planned for you too hot. I, but I want you to know, even though you're smelling what's in the pot and you want more, Start getting a little trepidation because you don't want nothing to mess up your little relationships with white people of power. You're afraid of the Jewish power. You're afraid of it. And some of you can look so strong. You know, among little brothers and sisters. But when you get around them, you look like blinking in front of them. Oh, it's 
Ma you say somebody said beautiful? I'm representing God. I'm one of the vessels that nephew Tadessa brought out of, of uh, the temple and deposited three hundred eighty-two. I think it was 382. The first group of vessels that were brought out, 832. And that's why I wanted to open up our meeting today with John 832. I, I, I want you to what gold does. See, Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple the vessels of gold and silver, brought them into Babylon, and they were despoiled with wine and strong drink and the filthy people of Babylon drank out of them. You are like those gold and silver vessels and you've been spoiled. But I wear gold today because with every wrap of that gold he's purifying my soul to make the speech of my life at 90 years of age. So you want to know where, where is Farrakhan? Well, you're going to hear him today. And I hope you're strong enough to chew the meat and eat the vegetables of the bowl of soup that we have prepared for you. Now, Elijah Muhammad, that's my man. <laughs> that's the man. I want you I want you to listen to what he said in Fall of America in 1973. Listen to his words. America and England deposited their little brother Israel on foreign soil. Palestine which is Arab land. They deprived the Arabs of their own land and sent them into exile. It's called a Nakba, which means a catastrophe. This injustice against the Arabs is now costing America the power and authority that she once exercised in the Middle East. Listen to his next words. She is on her way out of the Near East. And this means bloodshed and plenty of it. America is not going to stay in the Middle East. And I have to tell you, 
Israel won't remain dead. That's prophecy. But I got it from the mouth of God, and I'll tell you how it's going to happen and show it to you in your scriptures. Elijah Muhammad wrote, in the Near East, there stand navies which are neither American nor British. They are there to drive America out. The sky is over there beginning to thicken with foreign planes carrying deadly weapons, guns, and bombs. They will not be satisfied as long as Israel is in Palestine. The boil has come to a bursting point. We are in a troubled world and we are in a world that is now erupting. There are navies over there now that are not American or British. China got warships over there now. She'll be joined with others soon. Have you read in the scriptures when Jerusalem is compassed, surrounded with armies, know that the desolation is come. Now, why is this important to know? He said this, Elijah Muhammad, in 73. He left us in 75. But the minister, in a broadcast, on June 24, 1984, listen to my words. America and England and the nations backed Israel's existence. Therefore, when you aid and abet someone in a criminal conspiracy, you are a part of that criminal conspiracy. You are criminals in the sight of God. Now that nation, listen to your brother, called Israel, never has had any peace in 40 years. Now I was talking this when Israel had 40 years under her belt. And I said, she'll never have any peace because there never can be any peace structured on injustice, thievery, lying and deceit and using the name of God to shield your dirty religion under his holy and righteous name. When I said those words, fell into trouble. Right away, they charged me, not with being an anti-Semite. They took the most wicked name they could find to put it on me. They said, Farrakhan is the new black Hitler. Say that to Jews. What you're doing is creating an atmosphere that any self-respecting Jew would never want to see another Hitler rise. They wanted me dead. And they would come around places where I was speaking. And these are their words. Who do you want? Farrakhan. How do you want him? Dead. I never let the FOI bother them. 
I said, as long as they don't touch you, don't worry about it. Because if they touched us, then we would have to touch them. So for these last two months, I've been in my house, in my room, music room, baptizing myself in the pain and the bloodshed of my Palestinian family. That's our family. You may not think that, but it's okay. You have to grow beyond yourself. And you have to know that there are people in this world that are connected to you. Far beyond your own black skin. So, as I was baptizing myself, in the blood of my family. It was building me up for what I'm about to tell you all today. Netanyahu has a vision of Eretz Israel. Several states over there, including Saudi Arabia, Jordan, they intend to annex that to what is called Greater Israel. Do you know about that? Well, let's listen. Check it out. That man already has over 400 nuclear bombs sitting in the desert in Demona, Israel, under where my Hebrew Israelite family stayed. because they don't respect Joe Biden and they have not respected any American president in the last 40 years. They have manipulated every president of the United States of America. Give me a few more minutes. One of the great prime ministers of Israel is Golda Meir. Listen to what she said. There's no such thing as Palestinians. It is not as though there was a Palestinian people in Palestine considering itself as a Palestinian people. And we came and threw them out and took their country from them. To us, they did not exist. Now she is boldly saying, yeah, we took your country and threw you out because in their minds, you don't exist. 
Now, one of the names of Allah is He who causes everything that exists to exist and produces the means and maintenance of their existence. So for this Jewish woman to say they have not in her mind any existence at all. See, this is the way they talk now. And by Biden bowing down, and put my poor black sister that's over the American representation at the Security Council. I saw her three times with a veto in her hand. She's a mother, she's a grandmother, but she is being used to veto everybody's disagreement with Israel so that it never carries. There she is. You see her? Now, brothers and sisters, if it means nothing in the United Nations because of the American veto Nothing gets done. America is canceling the United Nations. So for you now to think, well, we'll take our case to the United Nations. For what? This has been with the United Nations for 40 years. You don't exist to them. Moving you and me and us is petty stuff to them. Taking you over, robbing you of your just due in every industry where you both are working together. They take you out. Because you don't mean anything to them. So, as I move on, here's what happened in Palestine. They chose October the 7th, the birthday of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. If a real fight went on, that was not fake. That action was real. And I'm looking back at the face of Netanyahu, and I'm not sure that even though they were sure of the outcome, they never thought they would suffer what they suffered. Hamas struck them in 22 different places in the most fortified nation in the world. So how did they get in? What happened? See? People are asking that question. They have an iron dome that America provided. And every missile that is thrown by Hamas, they usually pick it off. But not all of them. They sent 5,000 on that day. And not all of them were picked off. The iron dome failed. There were 22 
breaks in the wall, which was impregnable. You put a cap on that wall and several means of protection will come out at once. They have automatic machine gun fire. They have balloons, they have drones, they have weaponry. But none of that was brought to bear on the 7th of October. Now, the truth is, there was a stand down that allowed these things to happen. When President Biden landed, he asked Netanyahu, do you have any pictures? And Biden turned it away as he can. But when this war is over, We'll have an investigation where all the things that are questionable now will be brought out. They thought the war was going to last just a few days. They had overwhelming power. Four months have passed now. And now they're at the door of Rafa. Rafa is the last major city in Gaza. They went from the north. Now I want you to think with me. They dropped leaflets and told the uh, Palestinians, get out. You have so many hours. A million and a half. Palestinians trying to get out. And then they said there's safe routes to the south. And they started bombing those routes. They've killed so many of our people. And thousands are lost under the rubble and all the atrocities that they said we were watching Hamas do beheading babies raping women all of that was found to be false now the reason I chose John 8, 32 because Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. He was talking to Jews. And the Jews answered him, we have never been a slave to any man. But the whole world right now is enslaved. And America is the greatest enslaved nation by the synagogue of Satan. I never knew that my teacher was going to leave me and put me in a fight with Satan. He knew what I didn't know. He knew that I had the strength to withstand whatever they would do against me. He knew that. And 
and that's why Peter in the scriptures is called a rock because he said on this rock I'll build my nation that rock was the faith of one man that loved him enough to sacrifice his life, his family, his so-called career. But here we are. Back home in Detroit, by the thousands, to give honor to Master Father Muhammad, who came along from Mecca, and got the nation of Islam started, and here we are. Now, brothers and sisters, Cain and Abel. You've heard of them, haven't you? Cain was envious of his brother, Abel. And Cain, in his envy, hated his brother and rose up to kill him. You remember that story? was so frightened, he said, every man that seen me will kill me. So the God looked at Cain and put a mark on him and gave him a respite from the judgment he was due. So all of a sudden, Cain, who said, any man that see me will kill me. But God put a mark on him, and all of the blood, the innocent blood of Cain, of Abel rather, and the innocent blood of all that have died will be brought to bear on this generation. This is big. Who is this sin that has deceived the whole world? Have you been deceived? I think so. They laugh when they think of this. But this is the way it is. Cain became the prototype of the wicked Satan. Because now, Cain is so well seen that he becomes a bliss. He becomes one who rose up against God. The enemy is the enemy. He's been that from the very beginning. He believes that he will get away with his deceit and his murder of the righteous. God wanted me to say today what is said in the scriptures about 
if you come and ask him. After I saw the war council, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad showed me just the next night in bold letters. I started reading about Nebuchadnezzar. He was a man who was so wicked that God took out of him the heart of a human being and gave him the heart of a beast. Who could do to another human being? what is being done to our Palestinian family and let it happen and not think of a humanitarian crisis. The crisis is not just what is happening to the Palestinians. The crisis involves What is happening to me? What is happening to human beings who are more concerned with what they would lose by standing up rather than standing up and facing the consequence of their stand knowing that God will bring them out victorious. The Bible says God was going to open the graves of all of those who have been slain under the wicked rule, really of the Caucasian people. But who will pay for the killing of Palestinians? Men, women, and children. Who will pay for the destruction of the Palestinian life and culture, civilization? Who will pay for that? They don't think they're gonna pay. And Netanyahu now thinks like Pharaoh, he's God. He's God. And he talks to America like he's God. I don't need the money that you send me every year. Because I'm making a lot of money. I'm reading a book. I want you to get it. It's called the Palestine Laboratory. It's written by Anthony Lowenstein, Jewish man, writing about what they've done to Palestinians as a laboratory. Everything they've tried out to keep the Palestinians under control. Do you know they've made it into a business? And in every country that has dissatisfied citizens, they sell them what they've produced in the Palestine laboratory. Every country now is buying Israeli methodology in keeping Palestinians under control. So if you've got a 
angry community in your nation, we'll show you how to keep them under control. And the ADL spends money taking policemen out of the American cities to Israel to learn the techniques of how to break you into pieces. Freddie Gray was like that. Riding his bicycle in Baltimore, he wasn't bothering nobody. But they arrested him. And when they arrested him, they put him behind a wall of police. And they were breaking him up. And you could hear his screams. And when they let him up to walk to the wagon, he was already a broken brother. And he was screaming on the way to his arrest. You know that they put you in these paddy wagons and they make the ride as rough as it can be, throwing you from one side of the thing to another. This is what they did to him. And I could hear his screams. We had a Muslim brother in Phoenix. I heard his cries, not that I was present, but sometimes God allows me to tune in. And uh, I, I'm not trying to make myself anything more than what I am, but I heard my brother scream. His screams haunt me to this very day and the ADL is bringing police and teaching them how to kill us and they're vicious murderers. So now we got the ADL in court. can run the list of how they have literally handcuffed American presidents. So when you vote, who are you voting for? Trump will tell you, vote for me. <coughs> You don't get nothing anyway from Biden, so you might as well vote for me. He said that to black people. But Mr. Biden should be ashamed of himself being the leader of a country that is reputed to be the most powerful nation on the earth. And he's in Israel bound to Netanyahu. And I mean bound. They tell him that they're not going to stop the war. The latest thing I read was that they were going to If Hamas did not give up the hostages before Ramadan, they were going to continue the war through Ramadan.
He said they have to destroy Rafa because that is where the break started with Hamas through Rafa, through the southern part of Gaza. So now they have to get even. So they said, no, no, no. We'll fight. And we'll fight through Ramadan. I think I should shut this lecture down not because it's over but because I'm getting a little tired. Yes sir, yes sir. And at 90 years of age
that gave me life. And I am so honored that he's allowing me to spend my life to bring our people where the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the God wanted us to be. And you heard Ishmael as Elijah Muhammad's son. There's so many young people that we have trained now. The nation ain't going nowhere except us. Your kind permission. I'll finish as much as I can. But you've got to know these things. America is on her way down. How many of you can see that America is not the same? Billy Graham. And I mentioned President Nixon. Do you remember? There was a conversation that they were having. Mr. President was in the Oval Office and Mr. Graham was on the phone. And he said, there are two kinds of Jews. Mr. Nixon, he's telling Nixon. He said, uh, they're the wicked ones who are the ones producing all this pornography and this, these filthy movies and whatnot that has really destroyed the moral fabric of American life. So, in truth, they uh, They wanted to do something about it. And Mr. Nixon, with his ability to send bombs all over the world, he said to uh, Billy Graham, I feel the same way you feel. United States. You mean you can't say anything about this? And Mr. Graham, deeply spiritual man, said, Yeah, I know and I can't I can't say anything. If you're a Christian evangelist and you know Jesus Christ. let words come out of your mouth that you can't handle something. When the scriptures tell you, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me.
this anti-Semitism is stronger than we think this is Nixon talking. It's unfortunate, but this has happened to the Jews. It happened in Spain, it happened in Germany, it's happening, and now it's going to happen in America if these people don't stop behaving. If you won't use the power to help them to see that they are out of line. Now the minister, he's not worried about that. Why not? Have you checked my backup? if you remain faithful to my teachings. And then he says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You mean to tell me that there is a truth that is so powerful, excuse me, that once you hear it, you feel free. Free to say what you want to say. Free to think what you want to think. Free to be yourself. Free to worship the God that you wish to worship. Free to practice righteousness if that's what you wish to do. Do you know that our Palestinian family, they don't have strong friendship in the Muslim world? Why, why is that? Are we Muslims? See, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, you are not a Muslim. If you don't want for your brother what you want for yourself. Now, I know that the Muslim world feels the pain of the Palestinians, but they're afraid, <laughs> afraid to stand. And from this rostrum, I'm asking the Muslim world to stop fearing 
the consequence of standing. You have taken oil money and you have bought the service of some of the finest engineers, architects, people of extreme vision, and you brought them into the Middle East. I used to go to Abu Dhabi when it was nothing but a, a hotel you could go to. But when you come out, it's just a vast desert that you're looking at. And my brother Akbar, who is here today, we were in Abu Dhabi. Where's my brother? that he was revealing to me in the middle of the night there was the screen again and one name 
не пиха как нези. Everything 
that lives should be killed. That's pretty rough. I was in California one day and I was talking to my brother who sang as that beautiful voice. Um, he used to be with the Miracles. Who? Smoking. Smokey, Smokey was taking Bible classes and he came up on that where God tells Saul to tell your soldiers, kill every man, every woman, every child, every sheep, every donkey, every camel, don't leave nothing stand. And Saul told the soldiers, okay, we're going to get the Amalekites. Well, some of the soldiers saw a little booty. Now be careful. Sometimes you just can't pass up booty. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm talking about you as a soldier seeing the riches of somebody else that you are defeating. You, you want to get it. Because you ain't got nothing. So since you're killing men, women, and children, why not take some booty? That sounds so bad in, to in today's language, you know. I'm not meaning to be vulgar at all. But by booty, I mean the spoils of the war. And in every war, women, to the losing party become the spoils of a war to the winners. You know that, right? So they went in and they, they killed the men, they killed the women, they killed the children, but they said, wow, well, I could hear the Negro in them coming out. I'm going to snatch me up some of this. And they took the booty. And when the prophet Samuel talked to Saul, what are you doing? And Saul came up with this excuse. See, you see, you see the Negro coming out. You see, it's like this. We fought, we sacrificed, we died. So the least we could do is take a little gold, take a little something, take a few sisters. So he thought he was covered by being sacrificial. And Saul told him, the greatest sacrifice you can make when you give up your thoughts to accept the will of God. So,
Saul got busted. And he found another king for Israel. It was David. Because David was willing to sacrifice everything for a cause bigger than himself. Yes, sir. And I'm saying to all of us, you want good things out of life and you deserve it. But when it comes to sacrifice for the future of your children, for the future of your family, for the future of your people, sure. there's nothing too good. So your life is the last precious thing you have. I'm not angry with the Palestinians who strap bombs on themselves because they are sacrificing the only thing left for them. It's their lives and they were giving Israel hell. sacrifice of life is written in the Quran. My prayer, help me say it, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the world. That's our pledge to Allah. And we say it in our prayers all the time. But you don't know when God is going to call you on your word. My life belongs to Allah. So he didn't want me to come out here today with any trepidation over what he showed me of Netanyahu, whose king knew they were going to die and went through with it because the greater good he was thinking of was what's in Gaza right now. Billions of dollars of oil and gas under the foot of the Palestinians and they want it for themselves. The white people that saw value in the land of the native people that had wealth under that land and they gave them the permission, okay, you, you go there. Because they didn't think there was any value. But when they found out there was value, they killed those native people to get the value. And that's what they're doing now to the Palestinians because they want to build a great canal bigger than the Suez Canal because there are billions and billions of dollars oil and gas in Gaza and the waters around Gaza. So, they use the Amalekites as a justification for killing the Palestinians. Well, just a minute. Mr. Netanyahu. The Palestinians didn't bother you. You were in, in Europe. And your own white brothers, the Pope of Rome, looked the other way when the Jews were being slaughtered. But then none of them were Palestinians. So 
you deserve reparations not in Palestine. You deserve it in Germany. So you're going to have to think about returning to you because you're not going to stay in the Middle East. You're not going to stay Six months older than he, but he came. 
came to visit me in Boston where I was ministering. And he helped me with my play, Organa, which was a Negro spell backward. And he helped me change some of the harsh language that I was using to make the play more palatable. I said, white man, a white man, a white man. And in those days, boy, we, in those days, boy. From Akron? Time to go. Go from Akron? Right? From Akron, right? Give your street kings! Street kings.